Hey everybody, so tonight we're going to talk about, well, Gold Workshop. We did part one earlier, this is part two, I'm going to give you a little tip about gradients. What's a gradient? You say, well, we're going to, we're going to do something a little different tonight. I'm going to go over to my studio whiteboard, which is uh, full of tips and tricks, but that's another story. Um, but we're going to go over there and erase that and we're going to start over with gradients and talk a little bit tonight about the importance of gradients in a kind of different way. This is something that came up in the Gold Workshop uh, last time around. And so I wanted to kind of go over it again with you guys, uh, kind of explaining a little bit of the importance of gradients and, and the big why. We always want to go into the why and that's what we spend a fair amount of time in the workshop. The purpose of the workshop, again, going back into it, it's, it's kind of giving you what I need, what you need, okay? So it's, a, it's intended to supply you with tools, mental, uh, could be digital or otherwise, that, that help you find more gold. That's after all what we're here for is how may I help you find more gold? Hi, I'm Prospector Jess, Pro Prospector Guess, in case you didn't know. It's Jess, J-E-S-S. -S. Okay, so the, the, uh, the basic principle of asking why, well, that's because you want to analyze and find the root cause of things to be the way they are. And one of those root causes you've heard me talk about extensively, and I'll bring it up when I go over to the whiteboard. But that root cause is really important, so hang on, because it's, it's a telltale for an awful lot. And, and this was a, a revelation to a couple of people in our workshop, uh, and it might be one for you too. Um, the, the, the deal is that uh, we oftentimes don't recognize the cause of things. We recognize the effect because we can see it. So when I draw what I draw on the board, you'll understand what I mean. So let me go to it real quick, because tonight's gonna be kind of a quick tip night again. Uh, here we go at tip number two. We gave one uh, the other day, and so here we go. Uh, let me go to the whiteboard live. Uh, I have to move, maneuver things a little bit, hang on. When you go out and you prospect, one of the things you wanna be prepared, you know, Boy Scout motto, be prepared. So you want to be ready to figure out where the gold is going to be, from where the gold is, but also from where the indicators indicate. Now, one indicator uh, that's pretty readily available to you is essentially the streamlines, you know, in a placer deposit. And there's two basic kinds. And here's where we get into something interesting. One kind looks like this. So the stream might be a little, you know, twisty turny, but not real jagged. And it might go on and widen up and do stuff like that. Another one might look like this. And if you look closely, you'll see these two are really related to each other. Twisty turny passages all alike unlike something where the river is just running straight and narrow, which by the way is called a ditch or a culvert, okay? Because in nature, they don't run straight. Got that? In nature, stream beds don't run straight. Now, here comes the big question. Why? Okay, and so tonight for a take home, I want you to make sure you take away this thought and store it. And next time you look at one of these options, you use it to help you find more gold. Now here's what the option is. So I have a stream bed I'm working and it looks like, uh, say, we'll call this one and we'll call this two. What's the difference between one and two? Okay, so I have one that looks like one and, and here's the deal. What I didn't show you was the profile sideways. So one is on a hillside uh, moving down at a pretty fair slope. Two is on a, on a, out on a great big plain, okay? And the slope is barely noticeable. It goes on and on and on and on and on. There's very little change. Whereas here, there's a pretty good change. This is what we call a gradient. This angle here and this tiny little angle here is called the gradient. Fancy word 
They both have it. They're both basically the slope of the river as it, the amount of drop per distance that the river traverses. So how far down slope toward, toward the center of the earth has this riverbed dropped in the same distance, okay? So we'll call this L or D, better yet, distance, okay? And so when we look at that gradient, something important takes place here. The steeper the gradient, the, the more this current that's derived from this thing, okay, the current being a good friend, the helical flow. Now, what in the heck are you doing, Jess? Well, I'm bringing in another thing that takes a role here. Helical flow basically causes the cutting of the edge of the riverbank in both of these cases because water cannot turn a corner, any corner, small or large, without helical flow. And helical flow scoops material. There's the thing to take home. So imagine a big street sweeper running sideways down the stream. And in this case, now here's where I'm gonna switch colors for you. So in this case, we are basically causing a helical flow to take place and sweep the material from this side over to this side. And it's doing the opposite to turn the opposite corner over to this side. So they always sweep to the inside of the bend. You've heard the rule, okay? That rule applies. Doesn't matter whether it's doing this thing with a steep slope or a narrow slope. It's still sweeping to the inside of the bend. Now, why is that important? Well, because, oops, I didn't draw. See, let me get away with it. The street sweeper is clawing into the curved side and moving material toward the inside. The inside will have a slope upward. The outside will be a deep channel where most of the volume of water is moving. See where I'm starting to go? The difference and the only difference between this and this is the slope. So steeper slopes mean there are channels, they may jag, but they typically don't form horseshoe bends or cutoffs or any of that stuff until they open out. Now, if it's a meadow, meadows are typically an unusual characteristic or an ancient meadow where the water somehow got blocked for whatever reason, landslide, you name it. And, and the floods began to fill in with sediments and build up some strata on the bottom, loaded with gold, okay, at the leading edge. And so that basically means that both of these guys are cutting in the same manner one of them, because it's a narrower slope, a shallower slope, cuts wider. Because it, the problem with this narrower one is it cuts a little bit, and then before you know it, things shift around a little bit. All it takes is a very small change in slope, and this thing will cut, you know, it'll start cutting, uh, you know, into over here. So it might actually jump in a flood and change this channel entirely. It doesn't take much. Over here, it takes a pretty fair flood to cause this channel to reroute. It will do that because this is the zone, you know, this is down on the plains where things flood a lot. Why? Because there's a lot more volume of water coming through here. That's the only real difference. The slope is so shallow, there's no reason for it to really be cutting unless there is a flood. Whereas up here, there's a flood every season. See the difference? That's one of the differences. So the why, why things are cutting the way they are, the thing I wanted you to take away, two takeaways. Helical flow is what cuts that material and redeposits it for plaster deposits in all of the cases, okay? Uh, except for coming down slope, alluvial and alluvial and all that stuff. Different discussion, uh, another video, okay? Remind me tomorrow. But in this case, the gradient being shallow means that this thing's going to meander really wide, but it also means that those deposits are really broad. Lots of opportunity there, and that's where you've seen an awful lot of you know, the old steam shovel dredges, uh, floating dredges and stuff like you see, as seen on TV in Gold Rush, Alaska. Look at the area around where those, where those shovels are working. They're typically broad, open areas. Wide open for this kind of thing to have deposited a whole bunch of gold over in this side in each case. Okay, now here's the deal. Because this guy can jump from time to time, you might have a case where it's in one place and opposite in another. And that leaves you with little islands, they call them bars. 
So those bars can be deposits that were inside the bend at one point, cut off later by another flow, and redeposited in another place. But all of it comes down to this helical flow thing. So we got to keep that in mind at all times. You hear me harping about it. And the reason why I say harping on it is if, if you visualize a corkscrew or a street sweeper that's got a, a helix. A helix is like a spring. Okay, It's going in a circle, but it's moving forward at the same time. So it runs this flow of water, runs circular, but it's moving forward. Now the circle allows the water to turn the corner. The circle goes in the opposite direction if it's got to turn the other corner, turn in the other direction. That's why they don't just interchange. There's actually two separate flows here. One of them goes extinct and one, one continues to chew. What well, your job is, is to kind of visualize that flow and determine where these points of concentration are and find the gold. It's that simple. Well, not really, but you get the idea. That's the tip for tonight. Just think about the slope being this, this key determining factor. And when you see a place where, you know, it was running down the rapids, going over a waterfall, down a steep slope of rocks, and there isn't much material grabbed there, is there a spot where it slows down and spreads out? Is there a windy turn in there? What would the helical flow be doing there? That's what, what would helical flow do? Okay, so that's the idea. You're going to be looking for, visualizing for that, uh, that solution of, the water in flood doing this corkscrew to turn left or right okay so if it's going to go if it's going to go around that corner it has to go that way okay if it goes around that corner it has to go that way okay so that's the idea and so this that's just it for tonight i just thought i'd leave you with that um and get ink all over my fingers um well i'll get the pen tip top in a second here i dropped it somewhere meanwhile back on a ranch. This is Prospector Jess. Ah, over and out. Thanks for joining. See you then. Bye-bye. We return control to your station at this time. Thanks for, thanks for joining me tonight. Um, we're going to have another one of these tips and just keep dribbling them through, uh, through the next few nights. So uh, join me. I'm going to be putting them here on Facebook and putting them over on YouTube as well. At the same time, ping, ping. Uh, we're trying an experiment on getting everybody uh, awake and aware of where all we exist. Uh, we are on Facebook. We are on a Facebook page called Hunting F-O-R-G-O-L-D on Facebook. We are also on the Gold Prospectors HQ group on Facebook. And we are also on Prospector Jess's YouTube channel. You should subscribe. Take care. We'll see you then. Good prospecting and good night. Thanks.